Hi everybody! Today's video is going to be about colouring crystals and the reason I picked crystals and gemstones as my theme for this month is because I hadn't really coloured a lot of them. Um, I really haven't coloured many crystals or gemstones at all. Um, I was looking back through my magazines and my books to try and find pictures with crystals and gemstones because as that's my theme that's what I'd like to be colouring this month. I did find a couple of my old kind of colourings of crystals. Um, this is one this is one that I drew myself and here's my attempt at crystals here and I was really chuffed with these at the time but looking back I think I was trying to make them look transparent and kind of glassy looking and I really didn't accomplish that at all so what I wanted to do was research or look at pictures and try and figure out how I could do that um, this is another example of my colouring crystals. Again, they're ones I drew myself. I tried to copy Hannah Cars on style and put some in the background here. But again, I was having trouble making them look transparent. So yesterday, I spent a lot of time on the internet looking at pictures of crystals and I really couldn't figure out what rhyme or reason there was to where the shading would go or anything to try and make them look transparent. Um, there is an element of randomness, as always with crystals, they're natural objects, so they're not completely perfect. Um, there's imperfections in the crystals and stuff like that. But all I wanted to focus on was doing plain and simple, just making a crystal look transparent. So in the end, what I decided to do is just play about. That's the way I tackle most things. Just play, see what I can come up with, see what I can figure out for myself. So what I did, I dug out this book which is a book I actually forgot that I had. <laughs> this is Colouring Book of Shadows by A.B. Cesari. And it's all kind of Wiccan, crystal, herbs, all that kind of stuff, pictures in here. And they're pretty simple. So I thought I'll find a page in here and I'll try and play about with that and see if I can get something going on to make my crystals look transparent. Just concentrated on that, making them look transparent. Um, here you can see one of my very, very first colourings of crystals back in uh, 2016, something like that. But yeah, that's my very first. I've come on since then, but yeah, I did make a bit of a discovery just flipping through this book right at the beginning. And I saw this page here and I looked at how the shading was on this crystal here, very simple. And a realization that suddenly struck me, which sounds really obvious thinking about it. But the reason I wasn't making my crystals look transparent is because you couldn't see the light through them. As you can see in this picture here, the light is coming down from this angle. It's passing through the crystal and you can actually see it here. The, the light is here. And once that struck me, I thought, right, I really need to go and play with that now. See what I can do using that. So I flip forward to a page with pictures of crystals and that's what I came up with and I am so happy with how they turned out just working on the theory that the light is passing through the crystal and you can actually see it inside. I've drawn little arrows there to show that's where my light source is coming from. So this is the kind of phase that it's hitting but you can still see the light kind of inside the crystal here and that's the whole theory that I kind of worked on. I wanted to have a kind of formula to work to to be able to look make things look as if they were transparent and that's how I've decided to work it to try and imagine the light is coming through the crystal and it's kind of inside so depending on each phase how far away it is from like the middle of the crystal that's not how much of the light you'd be able to see and I think that's that's working really well um if we ignore the fact that it's actually <laughs> these crystals are brown pretend they're amber or citrine or something that's brownish yellow that's those are just the pencils i had lying around i just started um playing about by using the this one this arteza burnt ochre i can't tell you the number like most of my arteza pencils the number is actually worn off but i started playing about with that and then just gradually added in a few more colors just to try and make this um a shading idea work and uh, once i'd done that i tried doing a few more color combinations which i I've just done in the sketchbook here. I don't know if we can get those on camera. There we go. There's a few more color combinations there. Just working with that one is um, a couple of shades of blue and a little bit of yellow. This one is more like an emerald and this one uh, a ruby. And I tried to make this one look even more transparent by leaving lots of areas of light. I'm not quite sure that's actually worked, but it still looks a lot better than what I was doing. So yeah. And I moved on to actually trying to color a picture using the, that theory and this is the one I moved on to. This is a freebie from Anastasia Ellie Calderava and I used the blue 
two shades of blue and a yellow color scheme that I worked out in my sketchbook to do these crystals. Again, going over the edges with the white gel pen, as I've been doing. Um, and yeah, I think that's looking pretty effective now. So what I'm going to try and show you is how how I've been doing that. So I'll, I'll carry on working on this page and just flip it upside down so I'll have the same kind of crystal formation I was working on. And to start from the very basics, because even though the light is passing through the crystal, it is also acting on the outside as a 3D object, obviously. So if you wanted your crystal to not be see-through, you would just shade it as you would a normal 3D kind of object with, um, I usually use three shades, light, medium and dark, just to be, um, take it right down to basics. So I'd say this crystal here is the one that we're um, just shading as a as an opaque crystal so and we'll have a light coming maybe i should just sketch that in we'll have a light coming from this direction like i did there obviously this is upside down so <laughs> it's the opposite way but this is when i was coloring it i had it coming from that way and if i was just coloring this as a non-transparent kind of crystal this is just very sketchy just to sketch out the the shades you would have your lightest edge there where the light's hitting it so that would be your lightest this would be your medium there might be a bit of a shade there but this would be your medium so you'd still have a little bit of the light that would be your medium kind of face With the shadow there where the kind of face turns away from the light because it might be casting a little bit of a shadow and then this one would be your darkest side furthest away from the light so that's where you dot add your darkest color there we go so just keeping it as a simple 3d shape that's the kind of kind of shading obviously i'm just doing this really quickly <laughs> no blending or anything like that but i'm just doing that really quickly that would be how you would make your your crystal just look 3d without thinking about the light going through this is just as if the light would not go through it and carrying on down here That the face there would be maybe casting a shadow, and this side would be casting a shadow down. Maybe a bit of a shadow under there, down there. Just really roughly, just just a quick, very basic. I mean, some of you might already know this. I don't know, but. And the lightest would probably go fairly dark actually down here as it would be behind this bigger one. And there we go. You can maybe add a little more touch of yellow into these. Just make sure you keep the face closest to the light would be the lightest. That medium. And the furthest away would be the darkest. There we go. And what I've been doing is just going over the edges, the line, the line work with white gel pen, just because I think it looks nice when you do crystals and you add the, the white over the lines, I don't know maybe gives an effect of shininess or something i usually do it to be honest with you you can see in my other my other pictures even though i didn't really know what i was doing i had gone over the lines this job pen is not the best but as i said this is just giving a this is just giving a very kind of basic brief sketchy quick explanation 
of how we would make it look like a 3D kind of object with the shading. There we go, and I'm just sticking with my browns because that's what I used there. That's what I used here, but that's just a light, medium, and a dark can be a shade of any color. What I'm using is our teaser that's burnt ochre, but the number has worn off. I'd have to go and look it up to be able to tell you, I'm afraid, on that one. And these two are Castle Gold, that's permanent brown 159, and this one is cadmium yellow 007. Cadmium yellow 007, and those were just what I was using because they were lying around at the time. Another thing I've done there to make it look a bit more crystal-like is to add pencil strokes kind of going diagonally. Kind of darker in the darker areas. If that makes sense. I'm hoping this is making sense to people. I'm not very good when it comes to explaining stuff, but yeah, kind of diagonal strokes like that. I don't know if it, it seems to look good. I'm not sure if it kind of indicates the way the crystals formed in the rock or anything like that, but it, it seems to look good, so I've gone with it. You can also add kind of shine lines with the, with the white pen, as I've done in a couple of places down there, but if you look, add too many like that, it, it doesn't look too good if you go a bit too overboard, so, or um, to do a sparkle, do a circle, cross and a longer line through the middle to add a bit of a sparkle but as you can see that crystal very rough uh, i haven't spent a lot of time on it obviously i did spend a lot of time doing those but it doesn't look transparent at all so how i've got it to make it look transparent i'll work on this big crystal here and I'll stick to the same colors just so you can see i'm doing the same as i did there obviously you can use any color scheme experiment with using different um like pink and blue and anything you want really but the main the main shading is going to be the same you're going to have your lightest side will be where the light is coming from so this one would be the lightest side and this is how i started that one just sketching with this one to map down where i think my shadows and stuff like that would be so as the light is coming down this way this part of the face would be slight shadow still fairly light because it is the lightest face and then this one is showing a little bit of a shadow with that where that face comes in as it casting a little bit of a shadow there it would be dark at the top because the light the light is coming that way so it would in theory be darker at the top and as the light is coming through it's coming through that crystal there see this is this is what i discovered yesterday and what made <laughs> made me really excited to actually have it figured out so the light would be kind of here it would be lightest here obviously not as light as this face it's getting the full light but you would be able to see it as it travels through the crystal. Kind of in the middle there. And this face being the furthest away, you wouldn't be able to see much. And it would be, as the light's coming this direction, it would be further down towards that corner there. You would see the light traveling through. So you'd have a shadow here, where the face of the crystal would cast its little shadow, just as a rough map we're doing this. Okay, and this is the, this is the cadmium yellow. This is giving the lightest shade, which would be here where the actual light is hitting the hitting the uh, crystal. I'm going to 
going to give it some light here as the light comes down through. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but the way I figure it is, the more white you leave, or the more of the lightest shade, then the, the more transparent your crystal would end up being looking, as far as I can tell. So yeah, I'm just working in the darker shade now. Typical to have a phone call just <laughs> when I'm filming. And this would be the edge that's furthest away, so we'll add either our kind of diagonal strokes over there. Coming down there, blending it into the me medium tone. more of the light in this area where the light would be passing through. Oh, oh, I think we have got it actually looking a bit more like it could be amber or something this time. That's working slightly better than it did yesterday, so yay. Okay, that's the side that's furthest away. The side that's furthest away from the light. This corner, we'd have the darkest, the medium shade, but the darkest pressure up towards the top of that point there. I'll try and bring in a few of those kind of diagonal strokes to make it look more organic, I suppose. It just seems to make it look more like a crystal, as far as I can tell. These lines we're going to go over with the white gel pen again because I think that seems to work quite well. The light colour into the centre where the light would be, the light would be passing through from this kind of direction. So we'll add some light into there. Lots of layering will probably help. This this paper isn't the best, and um, I'm not the best at layering, to be honest with you. So that's the kind of effect we had going on there. And what I was doing on these crystals over here as well, I've gotten a white a white and a black polychromos, so that's 101 and 199 and I was using those just for the very extreme kind of shadows with the black like this part of the crystal that is really turned away from the light so I added a few of black black shadows and I was using the white as a blender which seemed to work quite well and keeping the strokes kind of going the diagonal. As always, you can go back in and Work over if you think things might need a little bit more shading. Maybe in the corners with crystal, maybe thicker. Of course, in real life, crystals are thicker in places, thinner in places. They have maybe veins or strands of other kind of colours running through them. I'm just trying to keep things really simple, just concentrating on making the crystal look as if it's transparent, which was my main problem 
from the beginning I could never make my crystals look as if they're transparent so that's why what I tried to focus on and hopefully this <laughs> this is working yellow a little bit of brighter yellow I'm trying to keep the strokes a little bit kind of diagonal blend that out with the polychromos Of course, if you spend a bit more time with it, you can make your blends nicer and smoother. But again, I'm doing this to try and be a quick demonstration. <laughs> I'm not really great at um, keeping things short, simple and sweet, but I will try. There we go. That's the kind of effect that I'm looking for. Moving down to these faces here there would be a bit of a shadow here just firstly working on the trying to make it look like a 3d object so there would be a bit of a shadow where that face the cut face of the crystal would be casting shadow down there And then as the light comes down this way, the light would be here towards the bottom. We'd have our darker shadows. Try and bring in a few of those diagonal strokes there. in towards the middle and bring in the, the brighter yellow leaving some leaving some white paper or if you were working on a different colour you could use your white pencil in there just to show that the light is shining through the crystal This would be our darker side. So turned away from the light, but you would still be able to see a very slight bit, I think, down, getting more down towards where the crystals cross there. My yellow with the light would start to come in there. Again, on this side, being the lightest, we still have a shadow cast from where that face is cut there. I'm going to show that yellow, the lightest shade coming in where the light would be hitting that face. Okay, I'm going to bring in our darkest shade down here because this little crystal is in front.
I'm just using this darker shade to put a little bit of a shadow there underneath where that, that face will be casting its shadow. Try and blend that into the yellow as the light is shining through the crystal. And using the polychromos to make that into a smoother blend. Keeping the strokes diagonal again, which seems to work with crystals. Blending out that yellow towards where the light, the light would be showing there. I'm going to bring in our darker colour here to show the shadow of that face there and just tidy up down this bottom corner. It's a good idea if you are going to go around with gel pen to leave it till the end so then you don't end up having to go over it but I'm still pretty near at trying to show things quickly so bear with me, bear with me. Okay, let's give a little shadow under there to show that the Face is casting a shadow. So even though the light is shining through our object, we still have to give the three-dimensional kind of effect that I showed you here very briefly. Light, medium, and dark. Even though the, the light will be shining through and affecting the colours very slightly. And giving you lots of white areas you still have to try and make it look as if it's three dimensional okay let's see what that looks like with the white lights Okay, there we go. I've gone over all the white lines and what you can do if once you've done that you realize you might need a little bit more shading in some areas, you can just go back in. So I was finding on those ones there that the black, even using the black in the very shadowy bits where the crystals are all grouped together. That was working quite well, maybe because of the contrast. Yeah, in the more shadowy areas, you can see. In the more shadow areas, I was adding more black and really working into that a lot more. This one is a lot paler because I haven't had as much time to do layers and all that kind of stuff. But the principle is still the same. And it's definitely a lot better than my previous attempts at crystals that I showed you. I think adding the shading into the corners especially seems to work well for me. The ones that are furthest from the light. Yeah, 
even on this very light edge here. A little bit of darker shading. Maybe went a little bit dark there with my shading, but yeah, I think I'll work back into it. A little bit more blending there. And there we go. That's looking pretty transparent to me. And obviously, you don't have to. You don't have to stick to using brown. I've played about with a couple of different um, colour schemes as I've showed you and I can show you again on these crystals here. I'll do the same thing with the red colour combination that I worked out. These are the ones I'm, I used for that one. These are all castle arts, just normal castle arts. That one is Indian Red. And the name's one off, but that is Indian Red 025. That's Flesh Lights 020. Scarlet Red 022 and Vermilion 023. Um, the Indian Red is the darkest, Vermilion middle, Scarlet Red is light and I just experimented with adding a little bit of the flesh colour because mainly because this is the combination I use for mushrooms and I was thinking well what if I used that, What, what how would that blend into the reds and it seemed to work quite well so um, yeah I'll just show you how I used the red starting with the medium colour again having the light come down this way so this would be our lightest phase I'm just, it's probably the wrong way to do it, but I like to like map out my shadows with the medium colour. So I can have a general idea of if things are going to work or not. And as the light is coming down this way, it would be hitting that face there. Maybe hitting that one more towards the top. Though there would be a shadow. Can erase if you do too much you can erase i think i maybe went a bit too far up with my shading there this is the darker side but the light if it's coming this direction would maybe hit there and leave a shadow underneath that that face underneath this face Let's try doing those diagonal strokes. Darkening off towards the bottom. Heading into the crystal cluster down the bottom there, so things will be a bit more shadowy. This space closest. And have a shadow there. Might be coming down this way, so through there and here would be more shadowy, I think. Lighter colour. Not as much light showing here. More 
more showing on this side as the light comes through the crystal. Again here. Alright, so coming here so this will be our lightest. in a bit of this flesh colour when I was when I was playing around in the sketchbook because that seems to work quite well with these huge reds. As I said it's the combination I use for my mushrooms so I wanted to see how it would work. Even kind of peachy reddy colour to this crystal. Maybe a ruby, I don't know. It's a nice colour combo so I just thought I'd try it out. Well I think it is. This would be the main. And this is the darkest. This one would have the light hitting along this edge here, so. Maybe I've gone a little too heavy there, just to erase. It's better blend out the edges with this flesh colour. Because the light is coming down this way, it would hit the top there. It would hit this, hit this one around about there. And that one kind of here. And go through to the inside, be about here, I think, by the time the shadows have blended out. Let's go into that with the white polychromos or blender pencil, or you don't even have to blend it. And the darkest colour I was using for those is the Indian red. Keep the shadows where the face is. Shadows where the face is coming. We'll be casting a bit of a shade onto each other. Down the bottom as they, the crystal kind of merges into the whole crystal cluster. This one would have a shadow under that face. Trying to work in those kind of diagonal strokes that seem to work quite well. Let's see how that looks with the white edges. Okay, I've added a few little diagonal white lines onto that as well, and I think we might need some more darker shading. I'm going to see if this black works. Ok, 
just to emphasize those faces really the faces of the crystal give a bit more contrast A little bit with the Indian red. Especially on these darker shadowy bits. Might be a bit harsh on there, I think. Just there we go. Just for fun, I'll do this one in the same kind of combination that I use for my Anastasia L. I. Coldereva crystals. And this one is, these are Castle Arts Gold, that's Cobalt Turquoise, Cobalt Blue Deep and Maple Yellow Light. Well, this is our lightest side, as our light's coming down this way. This would be a, one of our lightest sides. This one has lots of sides. Might be a bit more difficult to figure out. This face here would be getting quite a lot of the light, I think, so we'll need a lot of that. A lot of that light. If you have tiny little faces like this, or this one really skinny, we're going to be going over these lines with the white anyway, so you're not going to be able to see much in there. So it's best if you just leave it one colour or maybe use two at the most. I'll make that the darker one as we are going to be going over these lines. If they're really tiny little faces, you can just leave them plain white. The light is coming in through this kind of direction. Imagine it would be hitting this this bit here, and maybe a little bit further down there. So just before we get go down into the shadow. This is our darkest face, so we won't be putting too much light onto it. But the light is travelling through the crystal, so you will be able to see it when the shadow of this face kind of blends out. 
but these faces are the ones taking the most light so those are the ones that are going to have the most white space and for the, these crystals I was using yellow instead of a lighter shade just to see what it would do really to be honest with you just to play about I was playing quite a lot yesterday it's the best way to figure stuff out just take an idea run with it play see what you can do so I took the idea of using yellow instead of a, a lighter blue because this, this cobalt turquoise is fairly light anyway crystals do come in all shapes sizes colors so so you'll feel free to experiment with the idea yourself and of course you, you can always just have solid crystals this one is going to be fairly transparent from the looks of it <laughs> not much color on this face at all as I've said before, it seems to be that the the more light you have coming through and inside the actual crystal, the more transparent it looks. So this one is looking really transparent. This is showing a lot of light. Bring some shadow to the bottom. Here, when the face starts to turn away from the light, it would be shadowed, but the light would be inside the actual crystal, so we would have some coming through there. I really hope this is making sense. It made so much sense to me when I actually realised it. I'm, I'm hoping I'm explaining it to you guys. This is going to be one of our darkest faces, so make sure there's not super tons of light. But I think there would be some. Few of those um, kind of diagonal strokes that seem to work. This is first away and down to 
towards the middle of the cluster where there would be more shadows. And there we go. Let's see what that looks like with the white lines. And there we go. I've given him his blue outlines there. And I've tidied up our little solid crystal here so he looks a bit more solid and 3D. I do tend to get carried away when I'm <laughs> when I'm working. I go off on little tangents, go back and work on bits I've already worked on. But yeah, hopefully he's looking different to these now to show the difference between colouring the crystal solid with no light going through it. And these which have all got the light coming through and actually showing through. I'm just adding a little bit more shading to this blue one just to emphasise. I like to emphasise the corners. Piece of this one really does look transparent. This one, look at all the practice is paying off. I want to color all the crystals now. I need to find me pictures of crystals. I'm loving it now. Okay, let's add a few more sparkles and then consider that finished. There is a tiny little kind of bit of a crystal behind there that I might do off camera just to finish off the page. But for now, let's add a few sparkles. Give this red one a bit of a sparkle. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't quite show up as well as I'd hoped, but yeah, there we go. As you can see, that's the basic kind of same idea that I've used on these ones. Just have had a bit more practice, and I think these ones actually look better. But there we go that's the main idea of hopefully i've explained it to you guys well enough that you understand but it really made things a lot clearer for me and a lot more helpful that if you imagine the light is actually going through through the crystal so you'd actually be able to see it inside once these shadows from where your face is kind of connect once those shadows kind of blend out you would see the light and obviously if the crystal is still a 3d object so going down into where the crystal cluster would be there would be a lot of shadow so that would be a darker area but yeah seeing the light through the crystal is what <laughs> yeah no pun intended but that's what made things really clear for me is to make things look transparent you have to be able to show the light going through them and um, that's how I figured out how to do it so hopefully that made sense to you guys if it didn't please drop me a line and i'll i'll try and explain it a little bit more but even if you couldn't understand how i was explaining it, as usual you could see what i was doing and um yeah hopefully that's made sense so <laughs> hope you enjoyed that kind of how i color sort of tutorial and uh take care everybody i'll see you in future videos bye